it all, Miss Blaker? I suppose so. Very good, ma'am. I'm going now. I came to say goodbye. Oh, how very kind and considerate. I hope the effort hasn't exhausted you. Then you always were so conscientious. Quite the model nurse, in fact. I've tried, but what's the use? All right, don't let me detain you. It'd be a tragedy if you missed your train. Goodbye. I goaded you into leaving here quite deliberately, you know that? Then when you went, I hated you. Wanted to hurt you. Wanted to make you suffer. So I took some things of mine. You know that old bracelet and my silver ring? Well, I put them in your trunk. And the moment you were gone, I was going to tell the police. Things were missing so that they'd have searched your trunk at the station. Oh, yes. I'm a charming character. I don't understand. I've never... No, you've been wonderful, good. It's me. When I see how I've been changing these last few weeks, I'm frightened. All the time I know I'm being spiteful and malicious, but I just can't stop myself. If I could only sleep, and I might be different. But I lie here night after night, thinking the same thing over and over and over and over again. Where me? Yesterday, you refused to let me have my sleeping tablets. Don't go. Don't leave me. You know I don't need it. Yes, I know. Then you'll stay. Yes, of course I'll stay. And I'll forget all about it. I'll try and be different. I promise I will. I'll make you a cup of tea. You're so good to me, Anne. Couldn't you let me have my sleeping tablets now? I'll give you one tonight. Nice. One's no good anyhow. Well, you know what the doctor said. Oh, he's got an obsession about hearts. There's nothing the matter with mine. I know, but orders are orders. Well, I tell you, I must have it. There. I'm starting again already. I'm sorry. Never mind. I've been thinking about that trunk. You must ask the station to send it back, my dear. Oh, it can wait, can't it? No, I think you ought to tell it. Go on. I won't be happy to get saved. You can run over to Mrs. Pollitt's while the kettle's boiling. You'll be all right? Of course. Hmm? No, thank you. Well, I'm going to. I'm going to have a lemon. Blaker, tore Hill in this county on 10th of April 1939. 
Your duty, therefore, is to hearken to the evidence and to prove verdict to the jury whether she be guilty or not guilty. Having quarrelled with her patient, the prisoner packs her trunk, and no doubt feeling that the old lady's many little kindnesses towards her merit some slight return. She considerately relieves her of the burden of one or two little drinks, and packs them too. Then suddenly, the prisoner changes her mind. She will stay, after all. Members of the jury, you will ask yourselves, why? When did you last see Miss Blaker alive? Miss Blaker sent for me three weeks before her death. She wished to amend her will in order to leave the accused a bequest. Uh, did the accused know about this? I don't know. She was in the next room when it was discussed. She... She never told me. I never knew anything about it. And I found the key in the prisoner's handbag that fitted the medicine chest in the deceased bedroom. Is that the key? It is, my lord. I came to the conclusion that death was due to an overdose of somino administered several hours before. Now, doctor, you told us that your patient was bedridden for nearly 18 months. Would you say it would be possible for a woman in her condition to leave her bed unassisted? In my opinion, no. In my opinion, old Miss Blaker wasn't murdered. My nephew keeps a greengrocer's shop over at Claw Hill, so he knows all about it. And he will have it, Nurse Graham never did it. Lost a lot of customers through arguing the point here. Yes, sir, it's not often we get a murder case down here. Caught quite a few law in the district, it is. They say the case may be over this afternoon. I think this Nurse Graham will get off, sir. I don't know, I'm sure I haven't followed it. Oh, thought perhaps she was in Elminster for the Assizes. Yep. Oh, just passing through. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you're in the commercial line, sir. Get a tidy few commercial. Oh, oh why don't you look I'm what sorry. you're doing instead of jabbering about. I am sorry, sir. Yes, I'll put some of this on it. No, it's all right, I'll just pay you. Yeah. It's these glasses, sir. I think I need a new pair. Yes, why don't you get some? I'm going to. Next early closing. All right. I am sorry, sir. All right, all right. I, I do apologize. But the evidence against her is purely circumstantial. The doctor has given it as his opinion that the dead woman couldn't have left her bed. But it was only an opinion. He couldn't swear that it wasn't possible. Closing speech for the defense. If the prisoner were guilty, if she were guilty, I say, what would it imply? That this girl hears that she's to receive a trifling legacy when a helpless old woman dies. And so, within a few hours, murders her coldly and deliberately. Members of the jury, you cannot have it both ways. Either the prisoner is innocent, or she's a danger to society. A homicidal maniac, obsessed by the idea of gain. Now, you've seen her, you've heard her in the witness box. Did she for one moment give you that impression? Hi, paper. What happened? Not guilty. Humphreys, drop me off the flat, will you? Yes, sir. So Stephen got the girl off, eh? Yes. Jury were only out 20 minutes. Came back at 4.30. Mm. Talking of the 4.30, what won it? Um, Chase Harriet. Harpoon and Destiny, second and third. That's my luck, as usual. Not in the first three. What did you back? Live wire. Short circuited. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Sorry. Look after Charlie Smith. All right. Aren't you coming with us, Mr. Mather? No, I've got a celebration to attend to. Smith will kiss you goodnight. It won't be the same without you, Mr. Mather. That's your bell? Uh -huh. I see that girl got off. Did she? Yes. Someone's been very clever. Just goes to show. More congratulations? Yes, night of everybody. I tell you, this has given you the chance you've been waiting for. I was lucky to get it. The cancer hadn't gone down with flu. And the path to success is paved with other people's influenza. You took your chance like a Marshall Hall. I wouldn't say that. You ought to be able to start up a nice business. Gallows cheated at reasonable rates. I'm not sure about cheated, in this case. Why, don't you think she did it? There was a doubt. I managed to get her the benefit of it. Pretty strong evidence. Circumstantial. 
and very nice too. They should have called us in. We'd have fixed her. <laughs> to the future Lord Chancellor. Pretty girl, Nurse Graham. Yeah. So, I wish I knew. What? Whether she did it or not. Does that matter? She's done you a good turn. Hope so. Uh-huh. I overfilled the bath again this morning. More trouble. Yes. Would you come in? What name shall I say? Nurse Graham. Um, would you wait a moment? It's her. What? It's her. What does she want? I don't know. Probably wants to borrow a couple of quid. I can't see her. Tell her to go away. Too late. She's in. Good evening, Miss Graham. May I see you a moment, Mr. Parrington? Oh, certainly, yes. Come in. Oh, uh, this is uh, Bill Mather, Miss Graham. How do you do? You, do? Uh, you don't well, mind if you stay. I'd better be getting off. What? I've got to, old man. I've got to get back to the oh. station. Uh -huh. um, back to work. Oh, goodbye. Well, let me take this. Oh. You'd left the court before I could see you alone. I only wanted to thank you for what you did. Not at all. You made it easy for me. Why don't you uh, uh, sit down? You stood up for cross-examination splendidly. Did I? I didn't feel like it. Have a drink. I would like a cigarette. Yes, of course. I... Oh, just a minute. Oh, please, don't bother. That's all right. I've got some in here. You've had a rotten time. Yes. I haven't quite got used to the feeling yet. I mean, I'm not being stared at in that dock any longer. After all, it isn't every day one gets snatched from the gallows. Well, it's over now. Yes, it's over. Staying in London? Yes. I couldn't go back to Claw Hill. People there, I saw the way they looked at me. Probably your imagination. I wish it had been. I was with Miss Blaker for three years, you know. I thought they were my friends. If I hadn't known you were fighting for me and believing in me, I don't think I could have gone through with it. That's really what I came to say. Thank you. I must go now. Have you any plans? Yes, I've quite made up my mind. I'm going to forget about the whole thing and try and get another job. Didn't think it sounded very convincing either. Still, thanks to you, I can try. Same sort of job? Why not? I have nothing to be ashamed of. No, naturally. I mean, well, why don't you go away first for a little while and get some rest? I mean, there's no hurry, is there, from the financial angle? After all, you'll have the money that Miss Blake has left you. Why not? I couldn't, that's all. We have a clear conscience. Haven't you? Of course, sir. You're not certain either, are you? Oh, but, Miss Graham, Do you I... think I can't tell by now? I'm sorry to have butted in on you like this. It's silly of me to imagine your defense of me was sincere. Now, wait a minute. Once again, thank you for getting me the benefit of the doubt. I imagine that's what you'd call it. I've had a word with the matron, and I'm afraid it's, uh, it's not possible. What I thought, as I'd had my training here. Oh, you know if it rested with me, but we have to answer to the governors. Mm -hmm. You see, if we were to take you back and anything... I would... understand. Yes. You've been to the agencies, I suppose? All of them. Oh, thank you for trying. Oh, not at all. Goodbye. Goodbye. You, uh, told them all who you were. Seemed the thing to do. Hmm. 
I sometimes wonder whether honesty is always the best policy in certain cases. Good luck. Thank you. Hello, Sylvia. Any messages for me? No, Miss Graham. Oh, that came through over there, that's all. find it very quiet here, just my wife and myself and the staff, but I take you don't mind that. No, not at all. Your duties won't be very heavy, just to wheedle me about the garden and laugh at my jokes. Uh, Judith! Oh, you'll have to give me my medicine. It doesn't do me any good at all, but it's very pretty colour. Well, uh, how's that all sound to you? Hmm? Too good to be true. Ah, now that's only one side of the picture, though. Sometimes I'm rather out of sorts, and then I'm apt to uh, blast about a bit. Judith! Tell you the truth, and I get like that, I'm rather terrifying. That's scare you at all? I don't think so. I've had quite a lot to do with violent patients. Did you call me, darling? Uh, yes, there is Nurse Lovell. Oh, how do you uh, do? This is my wife. How do you do? I just think giving Nurse Lovell uh, my references. Oh, is that a fact, Yes, Jerry. We're going to get on famously, I think. Splendid. I suppose I must write to your last employer. Oh, I'm afraid my last employer died. Oh, I'm so sorry. It does happen to some people. You needn't worry, my dear. It's not going to happen to me. My wife's trying to be businesslike, Miss Lovell. She's really completely muddle-headed. That's libelous, Edward. I'm not interested in references. Your last three selections had wonderful ones. They might have written themselves. It probably did. Can we take it as settled, eh? Yes, sir. Can you possibly start on Monday? Yes, I think so. Good. I'm looking forward to being pampered. But Tracy? Yes, ma'am? This is Nurse Lovell. She'll be joining us on Monday. Very well, then. You can manage to catch the 9.30 train from Waterloo. I'll send a car to meet you at Dorford Station. Thank you, Mrs. Benson. And he says to Nurse Lovell, I suppose, now this war's started, you'll be going off nursing soldiers. So what did she say? She said, maybe I will one day. I'd go like a shot if I was in her shoes, I can tell you. I make quite a good nurse, tucking them in at night and that. You tuck them in, all right. And what did he say? Nothing. Just pulled a face as long as your arm. And then she said, simple, that I'd rather be here with you. And he smiled, happy. I must say it's made a difference to him, her being here. He hasn't sent his fish back once in three months. And you know what it was before? Terrible. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Nurse. Time for his medicine? Yes. I'm driving into the town before lunch. Does anybody want anything? I could do with a new lipstick if you're passing Woolworths. All right. Remarkable how quick it goes. Now the militia boys move down here. Thank you, Tracy. I thought Mrs. Bentley was going in. No, she has a headache. She didn't sleep very well. She asked me to get Mr. Bentley's tobacco for him. Oh. Oh, I quite forgot to tell her what colour I wanted. The colour won't matter in the blackout. Come in. May I put the curtains, madam? Yes, Tracy. Did you give her the prescription? No. Why not? I can't. Aren't you being just a little foolish, Judith? What is it? That is? I'll give it to her myself before she goes. <laughs> There's 
two seem to hit it off all right, don't they? Quite remarkable. <laughs> oh, well, it's not a bad thing. Come on, son, bring that back. Right back. What's happening? Opening of your sizes, Mr. Right back. I'm in Lowry. Maybe you are, but the lorry. Made up with Philip and Bessie. Certainly. I'll get this into you at once. Thank you. They're waiting. Mm hmm. I won't keep you long, Nurse Lovell. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else I can show you? Uh, no, thank you. Yep. Miss Graham, it is you. Oh, I was certain oh. it was. I saw you alongside in the procession. I didn't see you. I'll come up for the assizes. You're working here? Yes, Mr. Cantor. On the account, nurse? Yes, please. I'm in rather a hurry. I tried to get in touch with you before, but your solicitors didn't seem to have your address. No, I don't think I gave them any. Well, here you are, Nurse Lovell. Yet I'd like to talk to you. May I? What is it? You made me feel pretty cheap the last time we met. I behaved rather foolishly. No, but I, I'd like to explain. You see, it was my first really important case, and while well, I was much too busy patting myself on the back to take any notice of you, that is, you were just one of the facts in the case. You were entitled to your opinion, and seemed to be shared by a good many other people. No, I suppose I deserve that. But I want to tell you this. If I ever had any doubts, they've gone. You mean that? Yes. That's why I tried to find you. I wanted to tell you that. I expect you had a pretty tough time getting another job, didn't you? No, not really. That's why you changed your name. I didn't want everybody to know who I was. You happy at, um, where was it, Camthorpe? Camthorpe House. Yes, Mr. and Mrs. Bentley. It's charming. Oh, I'm glad. I often wondered what you were doing. Have you? Hey, Miss, you can't park here, you know. So sorry, it's my fault. Shall we uh, see each other again? I don't know. Do you ever come up to town? Well, I haven't yet. Well, why don't you? A change of scene will do you good. You'll be at the evening off. Oh, when, uh, next Thursday? Thursday? Yes, we can go to a show. Look, I must go. Well, I'll meet you at Waterloo. Oh, that's yours, isn't it? Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. I'm free any time after six. Which train will you be on? I don't know. I'll have to look them up. I'll meet them all. Here's your lipstick, Elsie. Oh, thanks. What kind did you get? Scarlet Passion's my usual, but I'm not particular. Scarlet Passion? Oh, you never got that at Woolworths. No, Hansford Stores. How much? Nothing. I'll make you a present of it. Oh, no, really, I couldn't. It's just sweet. <laughs> well, I get that on the shop, don't we? Oh, no, you look as if you've cut your throat. Next thing we know, the army won't be good enough for her. She'll be running after the RAF. Catch me on that caper. All they can talk of is aeroplanes. The army think of other things. Yes, well, that's not things you ought to be thinking of, me girl. You'll be making a name for yourself. What with that military policeman round here last Saturday? Well, how was I to know there was a soldier hiding in the coal shed? I don't know, but you were 20 minutes getting the cold. Oh, there's no harm in her having a boyfriend, surely. 
boyfriend. I wouldn't mind if it stopped at that, but she's the regimental mascot. Oh, what's that you got there? It's a Bentley sleeping tablet. Oh, thank goodness I don't have to take nothing of that kind. I'll go to sleep on my own. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I didn't know you used eyebrow pencil. Occasionally. Nail varnish, too. I'll do mine in fuchsia, but it always peels off when I wash up. You've been splashing out a bit, haven't you? Well, I thought I'd get a few things while I was in the town. Good out tonight. Not till Thursday. I must take these up. She's got a boyfriend. I wonder who it is. You don't think it's Tracy, do you? What, Don June? <laughs> don't make me laugh. No, if you ask me, she aims higher than the pantry. It's surprising how fetching nurses' uniform is. I've seen them in the parks talking to officers and gentlemen. Old gentlemen, too. Never know where you might finish up. The tablet, Mrs. Bentley. Oh, thank you. Just put them in my cabinet, will you? Because I'm only supposed to take them tonight. Mrs. Bentley, would it be convenient for me to leave early on Thursday? I'd like to go up to London. Thursday? Yes, dear, I think so. I don't see why not. Thank you. One petty larceny, the breaking and entering. Oh, yes, and another IRA bomb. Bell? Yes? Don't do that, old man. Oh, sorry. About that Palladium show on Thursday. Yes, all right, I've booked the seat. You have? Good, that's fine. Do you mind if you don't come? What? Oh, I certainly would. Why? Because I've asked somebody else. You what? I knew you wouldn't mind. You've got a nerve. You know, I always go to a show first day off night duty. All right, well, I'll ring up and book another seat. You better, otherwise she doesn't go. Not that nature ever intended me for a good dream. Don't worry about that. We'll lose you after the show. Thanks. Who is she, anyway? That, my boy, is a leading question. Steve? Yeah? A man in your position shouldn't think of a marriage bed till he's sitting on the wall, sir. I see. Good morning. Good night. Still with Mr. Bentley? Yes, I think so. Oh, I'm sorry, I could have done that for you. It's all right. I looked at that last time from Waterloo at 11 Oh, thank you. went flat out for it. By Jove, I, I covered the quarry and landed top on the green just by the pin. It was a pretty good shot, wasn't it? Wonderful. Mm. What do you think, Mrs. Bentley? Mm. Marvellous. Oh, I don't believe you're listening. But I was. Oh, no, I know that far away <laughs> looking at I, I know you were thinking of something else. <laughs> you can't Nonsense. fool me. Good afternoon, Nurse. Good afternoon, Doctor. Oh, Anne, the last thing back tonight's 11.30. Yes, thank you. Let's see, where were we? You were just about to hold your part. Oh, yes, that's right, yes. I was telling myself the part. You could look at the hole, look at the ball, look at the hole, look back to the ball, and then you hold it, yes? Oh, ah, no. No, it wasn't as easy as that. They've altered the layout since your time. Have they? Yes, remember that side you used to canter down? In between the pines? Yeah. Yes, well, you'll never gallop down there again. Oh, I mean, I mean, they, they've... They've sold the land. Yes, they've, uh, they've shifted the tea over other trees. <laughs> oh, well, goodbye, man, goodbye. You'll soon be better. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll see you out. I'm glad those tablets are doing you good. Yes. No, no, don't bother. I can find my own way down sure. there. Why doesn't he say what he thinks? Does he imagine I don't know that nothing he can do for me? I know what he's saying to himself. Poor chap. What a tragedy. I was trying to cheer him up. That's what it is. No, oh, I know I'm fixing this chair for the rest of my life. A magnificent vista of years and years. I could stand it better if only you complained, Judith. You're wasting yourself on a man who's half dead. Why don't you live your own life? Mine's finished.
rather a nice day. Why don't you go out for a walk? It won't be much fun having a husband who's nothing but a grim bit of furniture. Oh, what a mess it all is. I wish I could see the end of it. You understand, don't you? Yes, I think so. Hmm. You're very young. Your life hasn't been any too easy, has it? No. Mr. Bentley, I've been meaning to tell you. There's something you should know, something I should have told you before. Excuse me, sir. The car's waiting. You've only just time to catch a train, nurse. Oh, yes, you mustn't miss that. May I tell you later? Yes, of course. My friends, aren't we? Yes. We won't be anything, sir. Well, no, thanks. Just bringing my tray at the usual time. Oh, don't forget your medicine. No, no, I won't. Five o'clock. Mr. Bentley might like his tray when you finish with your horoscope. Okay, off to Cambridge. I'm not satisfied. I can't give a certificate. What do you mean? His heart was as sound as yours or mine. There was no organic reason for this. This key, I found it lying by his hand. Do you know it? Yes, it belongs to my writing desk. Oh, what do you keep in there? Oh, ordnance and writing things and those tablets you gave me. Tell me, can you remember how many it took? Three, I think. Yes, I'm certain, because I didn't need them after the first two nights. Three, and there are seven. There were 25, you know. Did your husband know you kept them in there? I don't know, but... Well, the symptoms are consistent with abdominal poisoning. Only an autopsy can decide. I'm afraid I shall have to inform the police. This is exactly as I found him. He was lying here. I see. Suicide, I'm afraid. Yeah. Well, sir, we know that he was left alone at four o'clock. The tablets were in his wife's room. Well, then, I suppose we reconstruct. Oh, half a second. Let me do that. Oh, all right, all right. Doesn't have caught my coat. All right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Wait a minute, I'll hold it for you. It's the back. All right. Thanks. There you are. Right. Now, I'm left alone. Uh, what next? Depression, sudden impulse to suicide. Mm. Remembers tablets in wife's room. Mm. Wheels himself to door. Ah. Uh, Constable, uh. wheel me down the passage, will you? Was he often in the dumps? He had moments of depression. Ah. Uh, down the corridor and into his wife's room. That's right. Go through. He couldn't have walked, I suppose. No, impossible. You don't think. Uh, Constable, get me off, Hilda. That's right. Your sandwiches, sir. Oh, thanks. Well, it couldn't have been suicide. No. You can't take 15 tablets without knowing it. It's nasty, isn't it? I can't understand it. 
If it was given to him without his knowledge, it must have been in something. Yes, well, it wasn't in his supper. Anything? I think so. Well, who gives him his medicine? The nurse. The nurse Luffle, but wasn't any motive. Mr. Mathis, can you spare him a minute in the bar? Oh, yes, all right. Oh, mind, I won't get him. How's it coming in? Don't you know I'm a policeman, a public scavenger, old man, a glorified lavatory man? Give me another sausage, miss. Why, what's the matter? Urgent job. Police cars picking me up here in a month. In order to make thoroughly certain of ruining my evening, the victim selfishly got himself dumped off 30 miles away. Murder. Mm. Have an onion. Oh, of course, they're not in your line at the moment. Dorford police called us in. Happened near there. One night in a place called Camthorpe. Who was the victim? Anyone important? Um, and, um, oh, fellow called Moses. Um, Bentley. That's right, Bentley. Poison. Poison? <laughs> Do they know who did it? Yeah, they have. We just have to clean this place up. <laughs> All I know is somebody fed him with enough tablets to put an elephant to sleep. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you are, Mother. Really? Yes, sir. Sorry I couldn't meet the girlfriend, Steve. I was only fooling. My sister. Oh, she's evacuated. Yes, she came up to town for a day shopping. I'll oh, give her my love. Oh, by the way, she'll be back tonight. We're putting up the loan. So long, Steve. So long. I think I told you, he's a police officer. <laughs> Any more trains down from London tonight? Only at 11.30. Gets here at 12.10. Waterloo Station. Exit. By the way, you haven't told me, how's the uh, job going? Oh, very well. And Mr. Bentley? Oh, he's grand. You'd like him. Do they know you're coming down on this train? Mm-hmm. They're sending the car to meet me at Dorford. Everything. I haven't enjoyed myself so much for a long time. Good. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yes. That's the platform one. Look, I'm not keeping you or anything, am I? I mean, if you want to get away. No, no, you'll, you'll be off in a moment. You do know it's first stop Dorford, don't you? Of course, why? I wonder whether you were wise. Why? To take another job as a nurse. What do you mean? Well, suppose the same thing happened all over again. Where would you be then? Have you ever thought of that? Aren't you being rather morbid? Stranger things have happened. Look, I, I thought all this was forgotten. It's a mistake for me to come up here. Anne! Ah. You can't go back. Listen to me. Bentley's dead. What? The police are down there now. 
What's the idea of dragging people off a moving train? Well, can't you see she's fainted? Why, I'm not surprised. Let me tell you, there's Look, every I thought she was taken ill before the train moved out. I couldn't leave her. I'm a doctor. Get me a taxi, quick. Go straight in. That's why you kept questioning me. That's why you almost let me go. This makes me a homicidal maniac, doesn't it? And all the it time... It must be very embarrassing for you having a double murderess on your hands. Listen to me. All the time I was trying not to believe it. And then when I saw you going away in that train, I knew you were innocent. I know it. Do you understand that, Anne? Yes. Very well. What can have happened? You don't know of anything. How did you get the job? I answered an advertisement. They think I did it. We are talking in the dark. You may not be involved at all. But suppose I am. Steve and I should go back. Not yet. But what will they think if I don't? If they don't suspect you, they'll think nothing. But perhaps they do. Then I'll take the responsibility. Now, look, if I'm going to help you in this thing, I must be in on the ground floor. I've got to know as much as the police know. I want you to tell me everything that's happened since you took the job. She's not on this one, unlucky. Yeah. Seems to be about the lot. Evidently thought better of it. Come on. Um. That brings us to this morning. Now then, what was the last time you saw Mr. Bentley today? This is Sir Farrington, sir, Chief Inspector Morsley. How do you do? What was it, a false alarm? Far from it. Take a look at that. Her old friend, Nurse Graham, I believe. Certainly looks like her. That's her, all right. She calls herself Lovell now. That was taken on the terrace at Camthorpe a couple of weeks ago. Camthorpe? Yes, you talked them into the wrong verdict that day at Alminster Assizes. Whiskey, Inspector? Thanks. She got the job three months ago. It's a carbon copy of the Blaker murder. But she didn't commit. Which is surely proof she did commit, Mr. Farrington. Of course. What was her motive in the Blaker case? I mean, her alleged motive. Well, don't split hairs, old man. Well, what do you want, Bill? Cigarette. Well, don't switch the light on because I haven't blacked out the window. Oh, okay. Two cases are identical. Remember the old girl's legacy and those things found in the trunk? Yes, but... Uh... Point one. Bentley shoved a codicil in his will last week, leaving her 200 pounds. You sure? Seen it. Point two. There's 25 quid in notes missing. Point three. There was a clumsy attempt to make it look like suicide. It's only a fool would attempt the same thing twice. A fool or somebody with a kink. For my part, I'd sooner be nursed by a rattlesnake. Matter, I think she might be able to help us. Me? Oh, yeah, she was a client of yours, wasn't she? Uh-huh. Can you tell us where we might be able to pick her up? Why, isn't she under arrest? No, she went out this afternoon and didn't come back. Oh. Well, uh, Fred, I can't help you there. I haven't seen her since the last business. Hmm. Well, we're practically certain she's somewhere in London. With eight million other people. <laughs> yeah. Well, you appear to draw the bank. Thanks all the same. Not at all. I suppose you've uh, put out her description. Yes, we're watching every port and terminus. It's merely a matter of time. I'll see you out, sir. Good night, Mr. Perrington. Good night. You know what we can do tonight? You may as well set a few hours sleep. Thank you, sir. Mr. Manager, 
promises to be a very interesting case. Eh? Hmm? Yes, very interesting. It might do me very good. It won't do you any harm. No. You know, Steve... Bill, I'm awfully back. tired. I've got to go north. First train in the morning to see a client, sir. Oh, I've got to be up at six. Good night. Good night, old man. Picture on back page of Sergeant Mather entering Mr. Bentley's house. Oh, pity they didn't get me coming out. Want to see what I look like? <laughs> the message for you, Sergeant, coming through now. Read it. Proceed at once to Waterloo. Ticket collector and taxi man report. Girl answering description. Seen there last night. Sounds like something. Waterloo, Jim, step on it. Perhaps this will help you. That's her, all right. Is this the girl you drove home last night? I think so, Gov. I remember she came over queer and the gent helped her. Where'd you take them? Let me see. I drove three or four couples last night. I dropped one pair at a little hotel just off Leicester Square. Yes? No, it wasn't them. I've got it. The fellow was with kept directing me all the way. Where? Uh, no, you must remember that. It was in the blackout, don't forget. Could you take me there again? I might. Mind you, I don't pride myself in being a homing pigeon, but... All right, I'll... I'll take care of this. Smith, get a statement from him. Come on. It was sharp right, somewhere about here. This is it. Here we are, sir. Right the very door. Sure? Correct. I recognise the iron staircase, sir. Yeah, so do I. Uh, could you let me have some water? Water? Yes, I'm uh, camping in the fields back there, and if this was the nearest house, I thought... Uh... Well, it isn't. There's a farm on the other side that's nearer. Ah. Well, well, perhaps this time you wouldn't mind it. Oh, okay. There's the tap. Wipe your boots first. Is that the set? Sure you're not a newspaper reporter in disguise? Me? <laughs> oh, I wish I was. Why, are you expecting one? What happened? No, I believe I could guess that. What? Wouldn't surprise me if you haven't won one of these beauty competitions. Ah, <laughs> you're being saucy. Miss Camp Thorpe, 1940. How's that? Ah, <laughs> you're being saucy. Now you All right, what is it then? You'll never guess. We've had a terrible murder. What, here? Mm. The master was poisoned to death in the best bedroom. That's why I thought you might read from the papers. I gave a lovely interview yesterday. Yes, I did notice a policeman outside. We've had all the heads of Scotland Yard down here. Asking questions about his nurse, they were. Really? Mm. He's been going about the country poisoning people for years. I heard them say so. No. Mm. Yes. There you are. Cam Fort Mystery. Nurse missing. It's her. I always knew there was something funny about her. I'd never have taken her on if I was Mrs. Bentley. Well, perhaps she didn't know that she'd been going around poisoning people. Of course she didn't, Soppy. None of us did. She changed her name, see? Oh. Uh. 
Oh, I keep getting a cold shiver down my back when I think of the number of times she mixed our cocoa for supper. It makes you think, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Doesn't it? That's right. Oh, well, they do say time's a great healer. Perhaps Mrs. Uh, Thing will marry again. Not her. Why, she never so much as looked at another man. No, the widow was devoted to the dis... See? Like it says on page four. This gentleman's just come for some water. He's camping down the road. Well, you can get some down at the farm, you know. Yes, so she told me. I'll go there next time. I'm just going down to the barber's for a shave. Okay. Weren't you down here last year? No. It's my first time this way. Why? Well, it's funny. I thought I'd seen your face somewhere before, that's all. Who's that? One of the family? Who? Oh, he's only the butler. But what a fuss pot. You know, he's too much of a gent to shave himself. Goes to the barber's twice a day, if you please. Always looking at his soppy face in the mirror. Don June, I called him. Doesn't like it, neither. Seemed to think he met you before. Yes, I can't think where. Must have been an awful shock for him, Mr. Bentley, dying like that. Yes, he couldn't stop talking about it. I've never seen him show any human feelings before. I don't like cold people, do you? No, not very much. Well, I must be getting a lot. Thank you. Oh, don't mind. Are you down here by yourself? Yes. Don't you ever get sort of lonely all by yourself in a tent? Uh, yes, sometimes. I walk up that way quite often. You're wanted. They'll have to wait. seen me. Supposing he was in court during your trial at Elminster? That's possible, but... Stephen, he needn't have been there. He could have seen you anywhere else. How can you be sure? Well, we can't yet. Who advertised for a nurse? Mrs. Bentley. Who sent you for that prescription? And who took that photograph? She did. Ten days ago. Yes. And the police recognized you as Nurse Graham from that. So will hundreds of other people. All very convenient. That's why we've got to stop this case before it gets to court. Stephen, they seem so happy together. She was devoted to him. All right, well, look at it this way. She was tied to a helpless invalid years older than herself. She engaged you. She sent you for the prescription. You say she didn't touch the medicine. Did Tracy? No. You're sure? I suppose he could have done. The medicine was mixed with hot water. He was in the kitchen when I went for the kettle. But we haven't got an atom of proof. We've got nothing that the police would listen to for five minutes. It's no use deceiving ourselves. So what we... Stephen, will... please let me say this while we're still alone. Whatever happens, I'll always be grateful. Better put your hat and coat on. Well, by rights, I ought to take you along, too, as an accessory. How did you find us? Well, didn't you hand in this petrol coupon at Dorford? She's innocent, Bill. Listen, Steve, you keep out of this. You'll get a fair trial. After the Blakers case? You know, we can't bring that up again. The moment her picture gets in the papers, everybody will know who she is. The whole case will be stiff with prejudice. So you're going to defend her again? Sorry. Okay, I wish you luck. ones of the almond size court taken on the day of the trial. I thought if Tracy had been there in the crowd somewhere, the camera might have picked him up. Rather catching at straws, aren't you? Well, what else can I do? What's the time? Nearly three o'clock. Only seven hours before we're in court. And we haven't the case to go on. You can't allege a conspiracy with no evidence to support it. Well, there's nothing left to do. The truth? I know, but you can't prove it. Let's be honest, Fanny. We've no defense. Then we'll attack. It's our only chance. If we've got no defense, we must attack.
Chancellor at the bar. You are indicted that on the 5th day of October of last year, you did willfully, with malice of forethought, kill and murder Edward Bentley. How say you? Are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. May it please your lordship, the members of the jury. Before I open the case for the prosecution, I must remind you that it is your solemn duty to consider the evidence without prejudice of any kind. Remembering that we are solely concerned with the facts directly connected with this case. Impressive, isn't it? Frightfully. Anything oh, taken a woman like that, a perfectly fair trial. Everybody in the jury must know she did it. What date would that be? The entry is under the 24th, Somnol Tablets, as per Dr. Treadwell's prescription. And you can positively identify the prisoner as the person who called for them? I can. Thank you. Call Mr. Mather. William Mather. You recognize this key? I do. The key of the writing desk in which the tablets are kept. Did you test it for fingerprints? Yes. I was present when the results were compared with the prints taken from the prisoner. And what did you discover? They coincided exactly. Thank you. Call Elsie Matilda Wrench. Elsie Matilda Wrench. Stand down, please. Call Dr. Treadgrove. I came to the conclusion that the symptoms were those of seminal poisoning. For the benefit of the layman, I might explain. Yes, we shall have that from the analyst. If you can contrive to be less verbose, do so, Doctor. Do so. Now, Doctor, will you tell the court where you found that key? It was lying on the table about half an inch. Speak up, speak up. It was lying on the table about half an inch from the deceased's hand. It appeared to be a case of suicide. Are you still of that opinion? No, I was present when the chief constable discovered that the patient's wheelchair would not pass through the door into the other room. If it is sensible, Lord, we're prepared to accept that the deceased couldn't have committed suicide. May I ask, Mr. Barrington? if the defence will be one of accident? No, my lord, I shall not suggest that Mr. Bentley met his death by any form of accident. I see. Thank you, Mr. Bentley. Thank you, Doctor. No questions. That will do. Stand down, Doctor. I call Judith Bentley. Call Judith Bentley. Judith Bentley. I needn't say, Mrs. Bentley, that you have the sympathy of the court. We are anxious to spare you all we can. Now, reverting to those tablets, did anyone besides yourself know where they were kept? I'm afraid so, Mrs. Bentley. Only the prisoner. 
This alteration to your husband's will, he added a codicil leaving a bequest to the prisoner. Yes. Can you tell us if the prisoner knew? Yes, my husband told her it at lunch the next day. But that's not true. The prisoner must remain silent. But he didn't tell me, he didn't. When did your husband tell her? The week before he died. Thank you. Mrs. Bentley, when you first engaged the prisoner, did you know that she had previously been tried for murder at the Almanstra Assizes? Mr. Farrington, you must consider what you're saying. We are not concerned with what may have happened prior to this case. With respect, my lord, we're very much concerned with it. Surely you must be aware that such reference may greatly prejudice your client's case? I submit that her case is already prejudiced. That is a most improper remark. But justified, my lord. This was issued the day after the arrest by the Daily Gazette. Nurse Graham charged the addition of one word, the word again, and the Daily Gazette would have committed contempt of court. But, my lord, that word wasn't necessary. It was common gossip who Nurse Graham was that she had stood her trial at Almond's on a charge of willful this murder. This is altogether irregular. My lord, there can hardly be one person in this court who is not aware of the facts. The accused was acquitted on the previous charge and comes here as an innocent person. The jury will remember that. May I speak to your lordship? I still face the truth. I have every confidence in my counsel. Your lordship, may I proceed? Mm. Very well. I asked you, Mrs. Bentley, if you were aware that the prisoner had figured in a murder trial before. I had been, I obviously shouldn't have engaged her. You would not even heard of the case? No, I hadn't. But you do know now that the prisoner was accused on that occasion of poisoning a helpless invalid? Yes. Shortly after she had been informed that she was to benefit under her patient's will? Yes. And the same circumstances now repeat themselves, so that whether the prisoner was innocent or not, she was certain to be suspected. Answer, please. I don't know. Why am I being asked all these questions? I, I, I've told you everything I know. We must hope that the object of counsel's questions will emerge. My lord, I intend to establish that there was full knowledge of the prisoner's identity before she went to Campbell. Mr. Farrington, do I understand that you are suggesting some kind of conspiracy against the accused? I shall, my lord. The defence, my lord, will be a total denial of guilt. I shall suggest that another person, I am not allowed to be more precise, administer the tablets. Will be calling evidence in support of that allegation? That is my intention. Proceed. You sent an advertisement to the Daily Gazette advertising for a nurse. I, yes, my, my husband asked me to. And the prisoner answered it? There were a number of replies. But you selected the prisoner's reply? Yes. Why? Well, she seemed more suitable. For your purpose? No matter, I object to that question. And the witness is not bound to answer if it tends to incriminate her in any way. Apply, etc., to Mrs. Bentley, sending photograph. Why the photograph? There's no particular reason. It wasn't so that you could tell which was the prisoner's letter of application should she adopt another name? No. Did you send a paper with this advertisement marked to the prisoner? Then can you tell us who did? I told her I didn't know her. I'd, I'd never even seen her. But someone in your house had? Not true. No one had. How can you say that? How do you know? I... I suggest that you, or another person with your knowledge, sent it to the prisoner with the object of getting her into your employment, knowing that if your husband were to meet his death in the same manner, she would be suspected. But I object. The counsel has accepted full responsibility for his cross-examination, Sir John. Is that so, Mrs. Bentley? Answer me. It's not true. None of it is true. Again and again, that I'd never seen nor, nor heard of the accused before she came. I don't know who she was. I should hardly have employed her. Whatever you try to make me say, I can only tell the truth. I love her. My Lord, I really must protest. The witness has suffered great distress since the death. I fear that Mr. Farrington is not helping his client's case. I beg your lordship's pardon. Have you any more questions to ask this witness? No, thank you, my lord. I feel, Sir John, that this would be a convenient moment to adjourn. The members of the jury, 
The hearing will be resumed at 10.30 tomorrow morning. All persons having anything further to do before the Lord, the King's Justice, may now depart and give their attendance here tomorrow morning at 10.30. God save the King and my Lord, the King's Justice. Yes. You will probably be our first witness tomorrow. Oh, thank you. I could do with a cup of tea. There's a nice little cafe around the corner. What do you say, Don June? Uh, no, thanks. Your lawyer to see you. Mr. Farrington. Didn't he send a message? No. Curious. He left the court in a hurry, I assume. But he that... promised to see me. Well, then he certainly come back. Meanwhile, there are one or two matters we must discuss. Why don't you tell me the truth? He hasn't the heart to face me after what happened this afternoon. Well, I'm sure that's not the reason. Come, Miss Graham, everything's going to be all right. Now, the first witness tomorrow will be the butler, Tracy. I just want to run over what you said to him. Does Mr. Featherwood still own this shop? Yes, I'm Mrs. Featherwood. Oh, well, I'm sorry to trouble you, Mrs. Featherwood, but could I have a word with your husband? Why? It's a matter of extreme importance. Of course. James? It's in connection with a murder trial that took place here a short while ago. Well, I'm sure he'd help you if he can. Well, there's just a chance that he might be able to identify somebody. Well, I'm afraid that's impossible now. You see, two months ago, he went blind. Somebody wants me, my dear. Now, Mr. Tracy, how long were you in Mr. Bentley's service? Uh, <clears throat> just a little over two years, sir. Would you describe the Bentleys as a devoted couple? Well, uh, that was a general impression, sir. I see. Now, there is something I must ask you because of certain suggestions that have been put forward. Had you ever seen the accused before she came to Camthorpe? No, sir, never. Had anyone else, to your knowledge? No, sir. At that time, had you, or any other person, to your knowledge, ever heard of the Graham case? Not that I remember, sir. I was never much of a one for the penny press. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me, Mr. Tracy, is it true that you shave twice a day? I trust you're not intending to be frivolous, Mr. Fagden. No, indeed, my lord. Is it your practice to visit a barber twice a day for a shave? Well, now that you come to mention it, yes, it is. I find one obtains a better shave by using the old-fashioned cutthroat. Though, of course, I wouldn't care to handle one myself. <laughs> I really cannot conceive how the witness's toilet can possibly be of importance. <laughs> As your lordship pleases. Have you ever taken a holiday since you've been in service at Camthorpe House? No, I've never felt the need of one. And you were never away from Camthorpe, that is, for any length of time. <laughs> Never. Do you recall where you were on the 19th of June last? Well, at this distance of time, no. Do you know that the prisoner was standing her trial at Almonster on that day? No. Then I may take it as a fact that you were not in Almonster on June the 19th? You may, yes. Have you ever been to Almonster? No, never in my life. You're quite certain of that? Quite certain, yes. Then who shaved you on the morning of June the 19th? Is that the man? He's the hairdresser at Alminster, my lord. I intend to call him at the proper time. Look at him, Tracy. Look at him carefully. Very well, Mr. Featherwood, you may retire. Now then, Tracy, had you seen that man before? No, never. Would it surprise you to hear that he's already recognized you as the man he shaved on the last day of the prisoner's trial at Alminster? Answer me. Did you 
hear the question? I suggest that on the morning of the 19th you visited his shop only a few yards from the court where the trial was being held. Is that so? Answer me. Judith! Judith! She made a statement on oath, a copy of which Your Lordship has seen. Accordingly, no further evidence will be offered on behalf of the prosecution, and I respectfully ask Your Lordship to consider a direction to the jury of a verdict of not guilty. Very well. I think you want me, don't you? Well, but Tracy, I have a warrant for your arrest in the connection with the murder of Edward Bentley. And I'm sorry. All right, I know all about that. It's rather bad luck, sir, don't you think, to be recognized by somebody who's only seen you once? <laughs> Our train goes at 7, James. Once again, thank you, Mr. Featherwood. Bless you, it was nothing, nothing at all. Do you remember, my dear? I always said she didn't do it. Yes, On the yes. very day, my own words were. Right, take him to the car. Good night. Taxi? How long has he been blind? Two months. Then he couldn't have identified Tracy. No, I can never put him in the witness box. 